Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to CWK Live. This is, of course, where we can have some Star Wars fun, community, and conversation. I am your host, Dan Z. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. There we go. It's a little bit of dark there, but now we are all set. Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It was nice to have a week off, but I certainly missed all of you and missed having coffee with Kenobi live as we do every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So happy new year 2022 to everyone. Let's see who all is here. We've got Minta, of course. This is the way. It's CWK Day. Hello, Minta. Hello, Ross. Good to have you, buddy. Merry happy new year to you. Happy Monday to everyone, of course. Tyler's here. What's up, man? It's great to have you back on the show. Colby is here. Hello, Colby. Happy new year to you. Jason says, hello, good to be back after a couple weeks off for the holidays. Yes, it is nice to be back. Getting back into the swing of things. Anthony is also here. Hey, everyone, happy New Year. So excited to chat about this excellent episode with you all. And Mary says, great Force Ghost conversation about the first FET episode. Well, there you go. That's wonderful. I'd like to see that. And Daniel is here as well. Hello, Daniel. Mason wanted me to tell you hello. He is actually in the middle of listening to the third episode. Harry Potter book, The Prisoner of Azkaban. This is his first go-round in the world of Gryffindor and Hufflepuff and Slytherin and Ravenclaw and everything involving Harry Potter. So he's really loving that. So Mason did give me his list, so I will share that with you. But he wanted to tell you all hello and that he is busy listening to Harry Potter. LJ is here as well. Hello, LJ. LJ just had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, LJ. Hope it was everything you wanted and more, my friend. Uh, I know you got a birthday present from the Cincinnati Bengals, as did Mary. They certainly... Did well and have won their division. So we're going to go ahead and talk tonight about the premiere episode of the book of Boba Fett. Oh, Tosh is Prisoner of Azkaban is the best one. Well, there you go. Brian, what's up, Brian? Good to have you. I love your shirt, of course. Looking good there, my friend. Great to have you back on the program today, or tonight, I should say. So we're going to look again at your top five most from the book of Boba Fett, Stranger in a Strange Land. We're going to give our Star Wars New Year's resolutions and, of course, your comments and questions. Now, if you heard Coffee with Kenobi a couple of days ago, myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club reviewed the first episode in a lot of detail. But tonight, we're all going to chime in and share the top five moments that really spoke to us. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. All right, what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week is, well, I mean, we've got the debut episode, right, of the Book of Boba Fett. Everybody um, seems to be really liking the episode, the series so far. Brian says, I did my part to represent CWK when we were in Galaxy's Edge the week before Christmas. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I felt your presence in the force, my friend, spreading the good word at, at Galaxy's Edge. I mean, Galaxy's Edge, what a great place. Hopefully we'll see a lot of you there next year at Star Wars Celebration because Galaxy's Edge is just across the street from where Celebration is going to be. Now, you may notice a few different things. Uh, hopefully it's not too dark. We did some different things with the lighting. Uh, my son Peyton gave me some more great lights that I could use here. And then I took down the multicolor lights and put up some white ones to give it kind of a space feel. And of course, we've got some Boba Fett decor back here in, in honor of the topic for today. All right, so what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week is tomorrow. Oh, look at this. Anthony says, my brother-in-law is loving his copy of the Star Wars Encyclopedia and the Star Wars book. Dan, well, Anthony, that is great. Thank you for spreading the word, my friend. I saw a lot of you. I'm glad that he is enjoying it, by the way. I saw that a lot of you got the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia for Christmas. That's super cool. I love that. Uh, if you are in the central Illinois area, speaking of the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia, We'll be having our first book signing on Saturday, January 15th. From 1 to 1.30, it will be an author Q&A with myself. And then from 1.30 to 3, I will be signing copies of the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia as well as the Star Wars book. So if you're there, uh, I would love to see you. Say hello. We'll do a little chat at the beginning as well. And as you can see, there are a number of books available for purchase at the Socially Distanced event. LJ is, is promising that he might be there. So that would be amazing. Uh, Tyler's going to be there as well, which is super cool. Man, love it. Love seeing my people. Hopefully, we'll see you, all of you. And hey, bring a friend too. Let's spread the word about what is going on. Uh, let's see what else is going on. As you know, 
and next or this summer gosh it's not next summer it's this summer since we're in 2022 we are going to have the star wars character star wars the galactic star cruiser easy for me to say uh in walt disney world and uh, next this summer we won't be worried about that because we're all going to celebration or we're going to try to go to celebration or just take a while to save your money for this event but the summer 2023 once we're able to get an exact date we're going to Set up so we can all go on the Star Cruiser together. Zach says he might be there. That would be great, Zach. Love to see you, man, for sure. Jason says as long as the weather is good, he'll be at the book signing. Looking forward to it. Well, that is wonderful news, Jason. That is tremendous. Oh, Ross is picking me up. Pick me up, LJ. Ooh, man. Wouldn't that be great? What a re nice reunion that is going to be. It is kind of on the way, sort of. Oh, man. Well, this is good. I don't know if this is a threat or a promise, but either way, I'm very happy about it. It's wonderful. Anthony says the Star Cruiser is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yeah, it really is. I can't wait to experience it for sure. Uh, you may have noticed that they have extended sort of the merchandise for the book of Boba Fett. Uh, and every Wednesday, really, or, yeah, releasing new. Sorry, Tuesday, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Am I, when you're a teacher and you're on break, everything gets screwed up as far as what day is what and all that stuff. But So tomorrow we'll get more merchandise about Boba Fett. Ah, uh, Daniel says road trip to Illinois. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Uh, speaking of awesome, tomorrow, this book, The Fallen Star, is going to be available er everywhere from Claudia Gray. I posted a review of it on Coffee with Kenobi today. I took it on the social media as they were. Hello, James. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you had a happy new year and a Merry Christmas. So I'm not going to spoil the book. The review is, again, on coffeewithkenobi.com for you to check out. I will say that I love it. I love it. Now, the, all of these audio uh, adult books, this is the beginning of wave three. They all are, I'm not, well, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's great. The ensemble cast here, to me, it's kind of like a greatest hit to some of the most awesome characters to me in the High Republic, and they're all together. And Claudia Gray wrote it, so you know it's going to be amazing. And by the way, the audio book, Mark Thompson, of course, performed it is out of this world spectacular it is harry potter speaking of harry potter mason listened to the harry potter audiobook now and it is just so good the way he performs it you would never know it's the same person voicing these many myriad characters but it just ups the tension and the excitement of a very intense book anyway it's i can't recommend the audiobook version of it highly enough either is that the third adult book already? Yes, it comes out tomorrow, Daniel, and it is awesome. If you want to look at a spoiler-free review, I have it on coffeewithkenobi.com for you. Paul is here, too. Hello, Paul. Good to have you, buddy. Uh, Anthony says, can't wait to read The Fallen Star. My wife and I are just about caught up with all the High Republic texts. It's great. It's great. I mean, it's one of my favorites. I mean, this one and Charles Souls and then Kevin Scott's are all great, but they, I just... I don't know. It's hard to talk about it without spoiling it. So again, I will not. But this one is a page turner. I could not put it down. I could not put it down. Uh, James says, I'm good. Just watched The Rise of Skywalker for the second time. I had some problems with the movie, but it's still a pretty good film. Good. You know, it's crazy to say. Uh, Mason and I realized this over a break. But we haven't seen The Rise of Skywalker since it was in theaters. And we saw it. I saw it three times. In theaters, Mason saw it twice. We haven't seen it in a while, so I knew I do need to revisit it. Daniel, the second book's pretty spectacular as well. Definitely read the second one before you read the third one, because a lot of the big emotional beats will be more powerful to you after you've read the second book. Ben's halfway through the audiobook of The Rising Storm. It's a great performance. Yeah, Mark Thompson is the man. He is definitely the man. So yeah, you look. I look forward to seeing what everybody thinks about that after the book comes out. People got a chance to read it, then we'll do more of an exploration of it here on live and on coffee with kenobi's regular episodes every thursday as well well we may as well just jump into our top five tonight top five moments from the book of boba fett episode stranger in a strange land as we did with the bad batch what does i do is the day that it comes out i post hey share your spoiler free thoughts on the new episode and i give three days for people to be able to watch it and catch up and then three days later i post all right Time to chat it up. Let us know your spoiler spoiler filled theories and thoughts about the Book of Boba Fett episode. That went really well. We got a ton of comments in the CWK Cafe. If you're not a member of the CWK Cafe, 
I think you really should consider it because we have some wonderful, wonderful Star Wars discussions as our Facebook group at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community or just go to Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page and you'll see CWK Cafe posts coming up. But it's family friendly, spoiler free, and we have a ton of fun talking Star Wars in a very, I think, a really good, healthy environment. There's no toxicity at all. It's just a great time. So be sure to join the cafe. If you haven't already, I think we've got 551 members and I would love to get to a thousand by the end of this year. So, hey, bring a friend with you to the cafe and we'll be able to do that. So again, tonight, top five moments from the book of Boba Fett, Stranger in a Strange Land. Overall, before we get to actually sharing our top fives, I mean, I like the episode you heard. If you listened to Coffee with Kenobi this week, you heard how I felt about it. I enjoyed it. Uh, there were there some things that didn't work or, or maybe perhaps not where I was, were hoping they would go. Yeah. Of course, but that's okay. You know, I still, I trust John Favreau and Robert Rodriguez and Kathleen Kennedy and Dave Filoni. I trust that they're going to tell a great story and a great narrative. So I'm okay not having all the answers. I'm definitely okay with that. So let's, I guess, jump into it. And at the end, if you want to just give overall thoughts on the episode, that would be great too. Uh, again, I do think it's fair to wait and judge it fully until we've actually seen everything. But let's just jump in, right? So number five for me is the Sarlacc Escape. Look, I was very honest about this on Coffee with Kenobi last week. Look, I wanted more. I wanted the Sarlacc Escape to last the whole episode. But for what it, what, what we had was great. It was very claustrophobic, very powerful. Getting to actually see it happen and see it break out of the sand was, was tremendous. And, I, and when it was done, I was like, wow. But I wanted more. I wanted more. But again, what we got was awesome. It was awesome. So... I put that at number five. I, I guess in my heart of hearts, since I've been waiting since 1983 to see if that was going to happen or not, I wanted it to last a lot longer and really knock me out. But it's okay that it didn't, right? It's okay. It is it is what it is. I certainly want to, want to be the person who had to be tell that story because that's pretty powerful. Let's see what you all have right here. Brian's number five. The fact that Boba has to fight literally for each and every ounce of respect slash rank. He doesn't just jump to the top from his name alone. But I think it's a surprise and maybe... Hard for some people, but I think that's cool, right? I think that's neat that it does take that, that he has to kind of earn his way up. I think that's neat. Mary says, the music, wow, Ludwig just kills it again. Yeah, he did some of the music, right? He did the themes, but he's not doing the overall score. Is that, am I right, Mary, about that? Did I read the credits correct? I don't know. Does somebody feel free to correct me on that. Anthony, seeing Max Rebo alive, it warms my heart knowing my blue friend is still around. Playing the music he loves, I just I also enjoyed hearing the Latin interpretation of the Cantina theme. Now that was cool. That was cool. Do we know for sure that it is Max Rebo or just someone who looks like him, the same species? I know I'd like to think that it's Max Rebo. I think that would be cool. It was fun to see. Minta's number five. Jabba ruled with this Jabba. Jabba ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. I will never get tired of that line. I remember you bringing that up when we looked at the trailer, Minta. So yeah, I, I like that line as well. Ben's number five. Boba Fett escapes the Sarlacc pit. Nothing really surprising about it. Just cool to see how his survival instincts kick in. I guess the acid can't burn through Beskar. No, I guess it can't. Fortunately for him. Ross is number five. The opening establishing shot. Excuse me. Starting with a pan outside and transition to the empty halls of Jabba's palace. Oh, how things have changed. It's so empty in there. I mean, it's it's kind of cold. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't very, um, very like warm and you know, empathetic in there anyway, because Java was in charge. But yeah, I like that too. Number five for Jason, the makeup, the makeup artistry. Great job creating a baked Boba Fett. Baked Boba Fett. Can you just see the gingerbread cookies for that, Jason? Daniel's number five, the desert creature. It kind of reminds me of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Its demise was very reminiscent of how Java met his end. Ooh, that's cool. That's I hadn't thought about it. Well, yeah, of course, with the chains. Yeah, I agree. Love it. Love it. Number five for James. The flashback scenes I'm okay with. The week that Django killed not being shown in the flashback. I know a few people were upset about it not being there. It was nice to be reminded of where Boba came from. I didn't really, th I hadn't seen that. I'm, I mean, I guess I don't see all, we see a lot of the, that kind of stuff. But yeah, there was no flashback of that, but that was okay. I've heard more people complaining that there was a stormtrooper in the Sarlacc pit. And to me, was I surprised? Yeah, but you know, when they were looking around Tatooine for the Death Star plans, who knows where they were sent on Tatooine? 
in a new hope and, and it's very possible that some of them may have stumbled into the sarlacc pit so who knows we haven't had any official word on that but that's just kind of how i put it together tyler's number five is the gift scene i love the shot to him sitting on java's throne yes i like that too that was super cool um daniel says wondering how he survived same same here man i'd love to know Zach's number five, the shot alone in Jabba's palace gives me some Return of the Jedi vibes. Yeah, man. So cool to see. Ross, uh, similar to what I had said earlier, he thinks that Ludwig did themes for the music, but someone else was a composer. I caught that as well. Paul's number five, learning that the opening episode took place on Tatooine. Yes, which we kind of suspected, I guess, after seeing Mando. But yeah, since he's with Jabba. And I wonder if the whole series will take place on Tatooine. Paul, what do you think? Uh, Mason's number five was suiting up at the beginning. There's kind of a very Tony Stark situation where Boba Fett gets his his helmet on. And Mason and I, had, I talked about this on the regular show. We had a blast. We actually stayed up till 2 a.m. to watch the whole thing. The whole story is there on Coffee with Kenobi this week or last week. So when that happened, even though it was like a little after 2 in the morning, Mason goes, oh, I've got goosebumps. This is so cool. And it was cool. It's very epic. Very epic. Uh, let's see. Ben says, I believe that Stormtrooper was just a previous job of visit or during the droid search opportunities are endless. Yeah, they really are. They really are endless. I kind of like the not knowing too. James, I was surprised none of the people who fell in the Sarlacc and Return of the Jedi were shown in the Sarlacc stomach. Well, it's probably a pretty big stomach, I guess. A lot, a lot of room there. Josh is here. Hello, Josh. Welcome, my friend. He says, the wreckage of Jabba's sail barge for his number five. Very cool. All right. Well, this is the most I've talked, I think, all Christmas break. Oof, how about that? Number four for me is seeing an RX series droid. Now, these are the droids. Uh, Rex is the droid that's in the cantina at Oga's at Galaxy's Edge. Also, Rex is the famous droid that pilots the original Star Tours. So then we see an RX series droid and also a, an R2 unit that's playing the drums, which how great is that? I love that. It could have easily been like an honorable mention for me. So I don't know if that was Rex or not, but just seeing an RX series droid in a live action Star Wars, that was super cool to me. I like that droid, that droid series because of Disney World and Disneyland. So it was very cool to see it in the book of Boba Fett. Anthony's number four. AT8 was absolutely hysterical to me. I wasn't aware that Matt Berry from What We Do in the Shadows voiced him upon first viewing. I like how through both Mando and Fett, so far background characters from the OT are getting their due. Yes, they are. Tyler's number four. The Jawas, I really enjoyed how they roll up in the sand crawler, rob Boba Fett, and then bail. Yeah, now, I, this, it drove me nuts. You may have heard this on the regular show last week. But the fact that they took the butt of a barrel and knocked him out, you just don't really see Jawas violent towards humans, like that phys, that kind of physicality. That kind of threw me for a loop, and I'm sure it did Boba Fett as well. I almost felt bad for him seeing him lose his armor, too. Number four for Minta. His escape from the Sarlacc pit was gratifying that we had some form of closure in how he survived. Yeah, I agree. And maybe we'll see more of it. Who knows? Uh, Ross is number four. The gritty texture and Boba Fett's helmet uh, green used to transition in and out of his flashbacks. I'll be interested to see if anyone else has a flashback during the series and if it is the same treatment slash color. Well, that's a good catch, Ross. I didn't think about that. That's cool. Number four for Brian. Wrist rocket for the win. Yes. No disintegrations except for in Tatooine, right? Number four for Mary. The cantina scene, seeing all the different species, the droids were all very cool. That was super cool. Jason's number four, the Tuscans. The new look of the dark brown robes and more insight into their life and culture. Very cool. Yeah, the Tuscans are becoming quite uh, quite enigmatic, I think, of all the different versions of them that we have. I'm going to turn a light here to see if it makes a difference. That's oh, a little bit brighter. That's too bright. All right. Sorry, just a little bit behind the scenes stuff. Uh, let's see, Ben, number four. Boba earns the respect of the leader of the Tusken Raiders. Is that where he learned to lead with respect instead of fear? You know, that's an interesting idea, Ben. I like that. I don't know. I guess we'll find out, but that's a very, very good uh, theory, I'd say. James is number four. Boba in the Bacta tank. It really reminds me of what Vader went through, especially the scene where the droids were putting Boba's armor on. Ooh, good comparison. I can't believe I didn't think of that. That's great. Number four, the Tuscan. I'm, you put love, I'm guessing you meant to say lore. But either way, I hear you, man. That's cool. Uh, Daniel's next one is Fennec's fight and the chase scene through the city. Great sets and action really puts her in her element. Yes. Yeah, we're going to talk about Fennec later, perhaps. 
in the episode. I, I wish we could have gotten more of her, but maybe we will later in the series. Number four for Josh is Max Rebo. Amber is here. Hello, Amber. She says, number four, seeing a, um, a Amino with Slave 1 on it. I'm guessing that's what you meant to say. Oh, Camino. Yes, Camino. Seeing Camino with Slave 1. Yeah, that was awesome. Just like a really quick thing at the very beginning. I hope we get to see more of Camino. Uh, Tyler says the concept art. I love the concept art. It's, I'm so glad that they're continuing that just like they did Amando because it's it's breathtaking. James, I got him in. I'm really surprised we got no flashbacks of Boba trying to kill Mace Windu in Clone Wars. He's so connected to Boba's past, especially with him killing his father. I, you know, I wonder about that too. He's either going to come later or maybe he's moved on. I mean, clearly he didn't like Jedi for a long time. Maybe as he grew up, he made peace with it, but who knows? Who knows? That's an interesting idea, James, for sure. All right, so Tyler moved on to number three. We'll get to that. Paul says, seeing the similarity in the staff used by the Tuscans, the one Boba used in the Mando series. I wonder if there is more to come after he earned the respect from the Tuscan leader. Yeah, hard to believe that they're totally done with that, but maybe they are. I mean, maybe he's got more he's got to prove, but it's going to be fun to see. Yeah, autocorrect can be challenging, Amber. I definitely empathize with you there. Uh, Mason's number four was the arrival into the mayor's lair and all the denizens there as well. Unless Mace returns somehow is alive. Nah, no way. Love the Boba Dome behind you. So cool. Yeah, that's a Black Series Hasbro Boba Fett helmet that they sent me a couple weeks ago. It's very cool. All right, number three. Number three, I put Desert Tussle. Uh, I guess what I mean by that is I'm actually talking about at the end. Tussle is certainly sort of a playful term, but... When he fights that creature, and I'm not sure what the creature's name is, maybe somebody else says, I haven't seen it on StarWars.com yet, so that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But that creature with four limbs that he fights and how he fights it, and just the build up to that and the suspense, and is that a crate dragon? What is that? And then rise out of sand, there's a great battle. I just liked it. I thought that was a cool way to end it. And I know that some of the designs people aren't necessarily as sure about, but I like it because it's very unique. Yes, it does look like... Clash of Titans as, as an homage to the Ray Harryhausen stop motion stuff, but I thought it worked. I thought it was really cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Ross, number three. Literally in the belly of the beast, the pulsing sounds, Edgar Allan Poe style, mm. and struggles against the innards of the Sarlacc. It's so cool seeing a stormtrooper there. No idea how it ended up there, but it is a symbolic reminder that even the Empire can be punished for crossing the Hudson on Tatooine. Very good, Ross, as always. Anthony, he's in the minority. He says, I love the interaction with the mayor's major domo. Awkward conversations are one of the pillars of my comedic interests. This discussion led in that uncomfortable gray area, and I was just about falling out of my seat laughing. I hope he appears again. Oh, you know what? I liked that it was awkward, too, and I think it's supposed to be. Like, he was rude. He was dismissive. There were some unnatural pauses. That was by design. I thought it was really well done. And if you like awkward conversations, I hope you watch Kirby Enthusiasm. It's, it's the best. Certainly not family friendly, but definitely the best. Brian's number three is the same as Mason's number five. I enjoyed the first suit-up scene of Boba in his armor, just like the early Iron Man movies. Yes, same. And, and after he mentioned I'm like, oh, I should have put that in my top five, but it's definitely in there in my honorable mention as, as well as in my heart. James' number three, flashbacks, a great way to tell a story within a story. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of flashbacks, Jason, in Star Wars historically, so it's I'm, I'm I welcome it. I like it. Just to me, just because they haven't done it before doesn't mean they shouldn't, so I like that it happened. Mean to Boba versus the Tuscans, you could see from the get-go, it was going to be an uphill battle for, with them. He was even bested by a Tuscan youngling. I chuckled like a madman at that part. I think it's important, too, and I mentioned this on Coffee with Kenobi last week. I think it's important that he he goes out of his way not to harm or do anything against when this, there's a youngling. I think that's very important. You know, if he did, I think he's all evil. You know, he can't hurt a child. That's just a given to a civil to a civilization. So the fact that he holds back from that stuff, I think that's important. I think they're going to explore that. I think it's going to be a, a very important theme. The Desert Creature, a love letter to Harry Housen's 20 million miles to Earth and Clash of the Titans. Exactly. It was so cool. I like that, too. That was my number three. Three for Daniel, the Sarlacc Escape. Was waiting so long since the 80s to see that. Would have been nice to see more, but how long can we explore his stomach? You know, they know that is right. You're right about that. How long can we possibly explore that? I don't know. And man, it was so good at making you feel claustrophobic. Tyler, what's up, Tyler? I love your background, man. He says the relationship between developing with Boba and the Sand people will be fun to see what happens with that. 
Paul says, learning how the Jawas ended up with the armor. Yep, we got to see it from, besides Cobb Vance telling the story, we got to see Boba's version. Zach, Boba's saving the day in a way. Or maybe before Return of the Jedi, he wouldn't have saved the child. I feel like he actually cared for the Tuscan child. Yeah, I hope they explore that. I wonder what, what that's going to be like. James, the four-armed creature that looked like Gora from Mortal Kombat. There you go. That's another good comparison. Number three for Mary. The scene with the Tuscans and especially the interaction with the youngling and then the fight with the four-armed creature. I'm thinking we'll continue to see the interactions with the Tuscans. Yeah, I think the Tuscans are going to be major characters, possibly. Anthony says, Curve is one of his favorite shows. There you go. It's pretty great. Uh, ben, why does it feel like a trade, trade Ocean's paying you a compliment is still a threat? In general, I love the entire paying tribute scene. I liked it, too. I like the I like the pacing and the awkwardness and seeing different species there. Aqualish as well. I thought that was super cool. Uh, number three for Mason. Uh, he loved the guard shield fight. He thought it was really cool. He liked the thrill of it and the chase scene in the city. So that was Mason's number three. All right, let's go to number two. Uh, James says, oh, sorry, Amber is number three. The droids putting on Boba's armor really was such a cool scene. It reminded me of Jeremy Bullock putting on the original white armor and under the helmet. Ooh, good comparison, Amber. That's cool. James says, all I can say is Boba's way different than Anakin around Tuscans, especially the kids. There's no doubt about that. Number two for me is the face-off. There's a, towards the end, Fett's about to escape. And the Tuscans pursue him, and then he's got a face-off between one of the Tuscan elders, and it's very much a mono a mono samurai style fight. He defeats Boba Fett. I think that if Boba Fett was rested and had his stuff, I think that it would be a much different confrontation, or at least would have been a little bit closer of a battle. But we got what we got, and, and you know, Boba Fett is weakened now, so it makes sense that he wouldn't have won. I would have been disappointed if he did, to be honest. But I like that, I like that sort of that machismo mythological construct of these two warriors facing off in the desert with uh, the natives watching along. I thought that was cool. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, two for Josh. The closing credits music, it sounds like an old sea shanty. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I hadn't put my finger on that, but you're right. Too soon, always too soon, indeed. Anthony's two, the duel with the Tuscan leader was epic. It was rather reminiscent in my mind of a samurai fight. Exactly. It was quick, and typically the one who moves first is the loser, which was Boba. I appreciate how Favreau and Filoni are not afraid to pull from the major Western samurai influences. I agree. I mentioned this again on the show, that it reminds me a lot of the good, the bad, and the ugly, especially him, them being kind of trailing through the desert, being tied up. If you haven't seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, you got to see it. It's really, really good. Oh, looks like my video froze. Interesting. Well, hopefully I can unfreeze it and then you can all hear me let me try something else maybe i can get it to unfreeze there we go and let's try this interesting all right can everybody see me moving now okay i'm not sure why i paused like that but i'm glad that's working again okay ross number two the bad guys your choice of the mayor's major domo the criminal shield assassins offering a fennec spotlight or the gang tagging the homestead slash moisture farm they stole water from Moss Espa is not for a vacation. No, it isn't. Nothing in Tatooine is, speaks vacation to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mary, uh, Boba escaping the Starlight Pit, punching up through the sand and all and all the gunk on him was great. It was awesome, wasn't it? Super cool. Tyler's number two, the Starlight Escape. Pretty epic moment. Always good to see the flamethrower put to use. Thank goodness he had that thing on. I can't imagine the endurance it would have taken to crawl out of that thing. Speaking of, Jason's number two is also the same. Boba breakout from the Sarlacc, very nasty and traumatic. I really enjoyed finally seeing how it happens. Oh, yeah, I wonder if I'll have some PTSD from that. Number two for Zack. The prequel love. I feel that it started with Mando with the Trade Federation, and then there's the scene in Geonosis. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Minta has seen Fennec in action. She still has what it takes, and I hope we get to see more from her. Yeah, I do too, and you may have heard me talking about this. I I feel like she got shortchanged. I want to see more of Fennec, for sure. I mean, I know it's not her story, but it is her story to a degree, so I hope we get to see more of her besides her just being tough. Tyler's number two, Boba refusing to be like the Huts. In other words, not staying hidden in the palace or being carried through the city. I think that's important too. Paul, putting the dog to sleep and petting it afterwards shows he isn't a monster. Yes, I agree. That's important. Treating animals is important. Brian's number two, Jabba's empty palace. Totally different vibe from our intro to the palace in Jedi. The first time we see Boba in the back to tank reminded me of the inside of Dryden Voss's ship. 
Oh, yeah, good connection. Ross said he could hear me still good. I'm not sure why it froze up, but I'm glad we're doing okay. James, seeing Moss Espa again, especially after its first appearance in The Phantom Menace, maybe we could see Watto again. Now that would be awesome. Number two for Ben, the desert fire with the monster. But I will say, there needs to be a little more love for Rodians. They barely get a minute of screen time for meeting their end. Well, th there was a Rodian in this one for a long time. But I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. That Rodian was not my favorite Rodian. He was kind of a kind of a knucklehead, wasn't he? Number two for Daniel. The opening scene took me right back to the to uh, the Jedi chill moment. Uh, the palace, the st the stairs Luke walked down. And, oh yeah, the the Rancor pit floor, great in the throne. Anyone else notice C three PO's head on it? Oh really? No, I didn't see that. And did you all? I'm um, Daniel. You probably felt the same way. When we see everyone or Boba or anybody walking across that grate where the Rancor pit was, don't you kind of like you know kind of clench a little bit, thinking, oh no. Is there another Rancor down there? A new one? Let's see. But no, I didn't see 3PO. I'll have to check that. Amber is number two. Boba Fett coming out of the Sarlacc. I'm glad they did that early in the first episode so fans wouldn't be annoyed about it, annoying about it. Well, yeah, I wonder how they would do that too. Ross says it was a narc Rodian. It was. Ben says he was a knucklehead. I wasn't heartbroken to see him go, especially after he gave Boba Fett away. Yeah, right? It was his best chance. And the fact that Fett actually wanted to help him escape like, do you want me to cut your bonds? Like, he actually asked, do you want me to help you? I thought that was cool. I thought that was kind of like a, sort of a manly, like, like a respectful, hey, you know, there's no dishonor in me freeing you. Do you want me to be freed or you want to try to get it on your own, man? It's up to you. The Rodian did not. The Rodian did not. Eventually, he met quite a, a nasty end. And I, Amber, back to what you said, I agree with that. I mean, a part of me thought we would be hearing about a lot if it wasn't shown right away. So we got it right off the bat. So there's no confusion about when are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? We saw it right away so we can just move on. And I'm sure that was part of the decision for the storytelling. At least that's just my assumption on that. But we need to get to number one. Let's talk about the number one moment from Stranger in a Strange Land, shall we? Number one for me. The flashback device, just the fact that they're using a flashback device again, as I mentioned, is important because Star Wars has not historically done that before, and it worked. And I love that we're seeing it in, I'm assuming, a back to tank and ties into him the fact reminding us uh, very directly that he is a clone. He is a clone. And perhaps this is how clones uh, specifically heal too. And yes, back to would heal anybody, but I feel like the fact that it's happening with them Kind of shows me that maybe clones are more susceptible to it, or I don't really know what it means, but I think it's important, and I'm glad that they specifically point that out and and remind us again of that connection. I didn't give Mason's number two. Number Mason's number two is flashbacks, the same as my number one. Mason's number one is the monster, by the way, the actual monster that we've been talking about. All right, let's see what everybody else's number one is. Uh, one for Paul, seeing the tie into episode four, the attack on Luke's uncle's house. Yeah, I, I think that was Luke's uncle's house too. Someone else moved in, perhaps, but I thought that was neat. Kind of a kind of takes your breath away a little bit. Number one for Mary Fennec Shan, love seeing her battling the attackers, tossing the one guy over the side of the roof was great. Just needs to have one of them alive, I guess, but she's going to be a great counselor for Boba. Yeah, I like I like how they kind of work off of one another. For sure, Mary. Thank you for sharing. Number one for Ross, Boba passing the trials of the Tuscans. They respect warriors, and he always carried himself as one, even when losing fights or winning and not caring about credit. He earns his sacred drink. Yes, he does. I want to know what the deal is with those drinks, too. Those little desert um, canteens that are growing in the desert, or whatever is the deal with that. I mean, to surprise no one mentioned this, but I was relieved that he spared Jabba's Gamorrean guards. The decision actually saved him from getting killed from Crimson guards, thus providing, proving their loyalty to him. I thought that was important so i'm glad that you brought that up mita because it's certainly important daniel rude roading he may have had his reasons but no telling how long he's been with the tribe that's true and maybe he was just as scared of boba fett as anything else anthony's number one best part was seeing boba within the sarlacc and learning how he escaped i am perfectly satisfied with the depiction of the event it shows the struggles that left boba scared or scarred sorry scarred definitely scarred not scared and the predicament where we give him find him with the flashbacks uh, let's see what else. He says, I think the story was a tight needle to thread. So many people have created their headcanon for the season, for the scene for almost 40 years. I agree. Like, it's impossible to live up to sort of our expectations of a, of a key event. It's impossible. So, you know, God bless them for doing what they did. Josh is number one is, 
I walk on my own two feet. I like that line too, Josh. That's in my honorable mention. Zach, the suit up. Hoping we see more of that and makes the palace so much bigger than it was in him making it his own, which was cool. James, Bubba's escape from the Sarlacc. Very great way to open the show and it shows how much of a bad, uh, bad guy, how bad it is. Sorry. You know what Bob is. Yeah. But was tough. I wanted to see more of that. Amber is number one. Max Rebo. I'm such a Max Rebo fan. I'm so glad he survived. That was great. Hoping it is actually Max Rebo himself. Tyler's number one. Fennec Shan. Anything she does is great. She could easily steal the series. You know, I'd be fine with that. I'd be totally fine with that. Jason's number one. Bubba's intensity, his strength and fortitude, enduring all the hardships on Tatooine. The look in his eyes when he's in hand to hand combat. And Tamir Morrison's delivery of excellent delivery of Bubba's lines. I especially enjoyed how. He sounds sinister even when he's making jokes. He does have a great voice, doesn't he? Good call. Tyler's number one, the visuals. This looks and feels like a high-budget Boba Fett movie so far. Oh, cool. I'm glad that it's working for you, my friend. Number one for Ben. Boba refuses a grand entrance in Mos Espa. He's proving it will be a different crime lord. That alone has piqued my interest in Fed story. Yeah, I like that he doesn't care about that stuff, too. Oh, Blake, what's up, man? I'll watch you Monday Night Football. Hello from my local sports bar. Love you all. Just saying hi. May the force be with you. Yeah, you too, man. Uh, be sure to catch the replay because I want to hear what you think about Fed. Be sure to give your top five in the cafe, my friend. On to one for Brian. The escape from the Sarlacc was the most singular question I had for the whole series. Uh, let's see. And they drop it in the first few minutes. I wish there was way more detail. We'll take what they give us. Yep, same here. Same here, man. Daniel, absolutely in love with the Tuscan textile costumes. So much more blacks and reds incorporate. Really drives home. Or different tribes for their dress and trinkets. Every time we see a new costume in Star Wars production, that means it opens it up for cosplay. Exactly. And I hope, Daniel, that you get a chance to make one of those. That would be cool. Yeah, Amber says I would think it was another one of his kind for Max Rebo. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I clear that everybody wants to think it's Max Rebo. I want to think it's Max Rebo. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully we will find out. James, still so odd to me. Uh, not sure anybody else, but Bo was being played by the same guy who played Django. It's crazy, right? But it's so cool because of the clone thing. It's just great how neat that they're doing that. Ben says, Jason, just notice the Red Wings hat in your profile picture. Good to find another fellow fan. There you go. Uh, Brian says, drink some blue milk for us all, Blake. Yeah, man. Have fun, Blake. Uh, I don't even know who's playing tonight because the Bears, you know, they did beat the Giants. Sorry, Lou Mangiello. Um, But you know, the season's obviously over, but I'm I'm still having fun. We're having fun watching the NFL. It'll be fun to watch the playoffs. And by the way, un, unrelated anything, I think the NFL season's too long. 18 games or 18 weeks too long. But that's neither here nor there. Well, very good, everybody. It was great to have all of your top fives next week, of course. Easy to know what the top fives are going to be when we've got a series to talk about. But we've got your top five. The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 2, Moments, whatever the title will be. But you can bet we'll be discussing it here on CWK Live as well as on Coffee with Kenobi. Begin last week, uh, it came out. So the show came out Wednesday, and then Thursday we did our review of The Book of Boba Fett, Episode 1. So we'll be looking for a detailed discussion of the second episode next week. And then, of course, back here on Monday for all of us can share. Now, again, I love how this works out because we all get to talk. And like when, you, when you're when you on the show and I'm sharing your comments, there's so many people that are hearing what you have to say. Your voice, friends, is being heard across the Star Wars community. So thank you for joining me each and every week. We've gotten a lot of people tonight. I hope that every week you continue to show up and bring friends with you because we really want to grow this community. Everybody has a voice. Speaking of community, if you really want to support me and Coffee with Kenobi even more, join the CWK Alliance. One of the things you get is access to CWK Pro over an exclusive weekly audio and video podcast, depending how you choose to contribute. But we did our top five Spider-Man moments. Boy, do we have fun doing that. Now, full disclosure, we recorded this before we saw Spider-Man No Way Home, so there are zero spoilers for the new movie. We will certainly be reviewing the actual movie very soon. But this was when we talked about comics and pop culture in previous cinematic spider-man experiences but nothing from no way home just good old-fashioned spider-man moments so be sure to check that out if you want to learn more join the cwk alliance you can hear cwk pour over then all you need to do is go to join the cwk alliance at www.coffeewithkenway.com slash cwk alliance 
Alex, what's up, man? Uh, no reason to be sorry. We understand family first, of course. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, my friend. Uh, Tyler says he's planning on doing his top five spotting moments this week. Great. Uh, see, if you're in the CWK Alliance, we also have an exclusive uh, private Facebook group there to share our non-Star Wars conversations and Star Wars ones as well. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Ask DMZ. So Ben wants to know what's football. Yes, the NFL, National Football League, American Football. Amber says like soccer. Not exactly like soccer. Uh, James says, would you like to see a cameo appearance of Wado and Rada, a.k.a. Java's son from the Clone Wars in the show? Like his son returns to claim the, his father's palace. That would be awesome. Yeah, I would love it. I think that would be really fun to see. Alex says, I can't wait to rewatch everybody's top five. Yeah, it was fun, Alex. We certainly missed you. Be sure to put your top five in the cafe as well. Why well, adopt another team for the playoffs? Well, I mean, Mason loves the Chiefs, and I just like watching good football. So I, I really, I'll just watch every game. I'm certainly have someone I pick for each one. I'd love to see Tom Brady go again, just because I think greatness should always be celebrated. But there's a lot of them I'm, I'm certainly pulling for. There's nobody I'm really pulling against, except for, of course for the Green Bay Packers because I'm a Bears fan. So Star Wars based New Year's resolutions. That's actually one of the things we're going to talk about. In fact, I will shift the screen a little bit. Oh, uh, what's me and Mason's Hogwarts house? Well, I'm Gryffindor. I'm assuming he's Gryffindor, too. We haven't talked about that. But that's a good question, Todd. I will ask him. Anthony uh, said, go Eagles. Do yourself a favor and join the CWK Alliance, right? LJ, yeah, I would love to have you in the CWK Alliance. It's a great way to support me and the show. Uh, 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital every month. And you just get some extra content that you don't get anywhere else. We have a lot of laughs, for sure. A ton of laughs. So Star Wars New Year's resolutions. So, you know, New Year's resolutions are great if you stick to them, right? If you if you make a plan to better yourself, that to me, that's that is a resolution. New Year's resolutions, right? So I think for me, like we make resolutions, we make plans for our family. Mason joined us this year to do that. And one of the things um, that I said is I want to. Of course, I'll be reading all the Star Wars books as they come out. But one of my Star Wars resolutions is to read books that aren't Star Wars related because I want to expand my palette, right? So, yes, you want to read Star Wars because we love this community and we love this franchise and this mythology. But I want to make sure that uh, at least once a quarter, I read something non-Star Wars related to just kind of keep myself out in the open to other things. So that's one of my Star Wars resolutions is to do extra things that are not Star Wars related. Uh, what Star Wars resolutions do you have? Or what resolutions do you have that you want to share? Paul said Boba Fett's ship wasn't in the first episode, just on Kamino on the platform for like two seconds in a flashback. Do you think it will be referred to by its original name or the new one? Uh, I don't know that we're going to see that old name again. Again, not I don't have any official news on that, but I think, I don't know. I would love to see a new name for it. I guess we'll find out. Man, what was my favorite Christmas gift and what was Mason's favorite? Well, Mason got a lot of cool stuff. One of the things he got was Slappy from Goosebumps, the ventriloquist dummy. So we actually got a ventriloquist dummy from Santa. And wow, he's good with it too, by the way. Uh, I got some great Christmas um, gifts. I got some great clothes and some cologne and things like that. I, I just, I had so much fun with my family on uh, Christmas. I had a blast. I hope you did as well, Ben. Well, I'll be doing a top five of No Way Home. Great episode last week on Prover. Yes, we're going to review No Way Home for sure, Alex. I don't know if it'll be a top five or not, but we're definitely going to review it. That's good. Uh, Ross says, read The Secret History of Donna Tart. You'll love it. Okay. Noted, Ross. Noted. Uh, Dan uh, Daniel says, what part of the character book did you contribute to? A certain section. I believe you mentioned, but I can't remember. I'm halfway through it. Yep. Daniel, happy to share. I, I contributed to 95, 96, 97% of the Mandalorian characters and a couple of other characters that were random too. But uh, if, if there's a Mandalorian character in the Star Wars character encyclopedia, uh, then yes, that you could pretty much... The ads are pretty high that I contributed to that. Ben's reading the new Story of Marvel Studios book that was released. Just a lot of mentions of Star Wars in it. Feige is a fan. Yes, he is. That's cool, Ben. I'd like to see that. Maybe get it from my library. I don't really want to get Paul McCartney's new book as well. Anthony plans to watch a lot of movies and inspired Star Wars, such as Seven Samurai, The Searchers, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Yes, that's a great Star Wars resolution. The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is great. Highly recommend it. 
uh, Amber uh, Mason <laughs> Amber says that your your creation is creepy. It is that that sloppy thing is creepy. Jason Star Wars resolution is to read all the Star Wars books I got for Christmas and rewatch the Skywalker saga films. I like it. I like it. What books did you get? Actually, you posted it in the cafe, so now I remember. Brian, out of the four options at Savvy's Workshop, which lights or build is your favorite? I built Peace and Justice. We were there a few weeks ago. That's the one I built too, for sure, Brian. I love that one. I like they're all cool. I think the uh, Knowledge and Defense is a pretty neat one too. Mason built the, the Sith one just because it was a cool looking design. But they're really nice, aren't they? I think Savvy's Workshop is about as good as it gets. Uh, as far as stars experiences go and you get a you get a lightsaber that you built so there's really nothing better than that for sure all right any other star wars resolutions if you love i think i need to rewatch the rise of skywalker again i haven't watched it again since it came out i think i need to give it another chance so that might be one on there alex wants to know what kind of toys does mason like legos or action figures he likes legos he likes action figures he likes nerf guns he thinks those are fun Ice huge into sports. We play a lot of football. Even when it's cold out, we're playing football outside and baseball and stuff like that. Good question, Alex. Tyler, my Star Wars resolution is to emulate Qui-Gon and do things my own way in life. Don't let others pull me in certain directions. That's great. What a great Star Wars resolution, Tyler. Brilliant. That is fantastic. Emulating Qui-Gon, Jin, you can do a lot worse. He's a good man. He's a maverick, but he, he does things the right way, but he does things his way. And not because he's trying to ruffle feathers, but because he believes in a different course of action. That is so good, Tyler. I love that. I love that. All right, everybody. Well, be sure, if you have a Star Wars resolution, I will post a place in the CW Cafe for you to share what your Star Wars resolution is. Tyler says, just finished uh, High Republic Into the Dark. It was so good. Which is which is the favorite? Which High Republic book is your favorite? Well, I know. Into the Dark is great, but Claudia's new book, which comes out tomorrow, Fallen Star, is tremendously good. Um... Light of the Jedi is great. Cabin's book uh, is so good, man. It's they're good. They're just they're just you really can't find a bad one, can you? Uh, Mary says, "Have a great week." Yes, Mary, you too. Thanks for joining me, of course, my friend. Ross says, "Cheers, friends. Have a great week and enjoy chapter two. Likewise, buddy. Daniel says, "Your focus determines your reality." Exactly, exactly, Daniel. Take care, everyone. See you next week, Anthony. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all for joining us again. What a wonderful. A uh, group of you that showed up tonight it was really a pleasure to share the evening with you, talking Star Wars and the Book of Boba Fett. Jason, have a great week. So good to be with you all. Yes, definitely, man. Amber, may the force be with you. Colby, see you later, man. CWK family forever. Two days until episode two of the Book of Boba Fett. That's right, Tyler. Thanks again. Great to have you back on the show, brother. Really nice to chat with you. Minta, rewatch the Star Wars movies will be a Star Wars resolution. That's a great one, Minta. Let us know how it goes. Alex, glad you were able to join us as well. Good night. Paul, uh, Mason says hi to Jonah as well. Ben, take care, and we will see you all next week and later this week. Be sure to check your podcast catchers for an in-depth review of the second chapter of the Book of Boba Fett, followed next Monday by us talking about it here on CWK Live. Daniel, we'll see you in the cafe. Minta, may the forest be with you. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night, and remember this is a podcast you're looking for. See you next time.